Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll be discussing about joints. The other day, my boss came to me and he said that, Hey Virud, I have a task for you. I was like, mm -hmm. what is that boss? He said, we have two different files and you have to join them for me. I was like, mm -hmm, that is a piece of cake. But I wanted to know very important information before saying a piece of cake to him. So then I asked him that, boss, by any chance, do you know if we have a common column or a key to join those two files? Surprisingly, my boss had some technical experience and knowledge and he was able to say yes. Then I said to him, that is a piece of cake, boss. I think you don't believe me, but let's get into the video so that I'll show you how easy it is to implement joining of two different files or joining two different tables or two different data if you have a common key between them coming from two different sources doesn't really matter but you can easily join them within adf data flow because it is an out of box solution we have very easily okay so if you look at my screen so let's start with a very fancy and nice definition because if you have been following my previous videos, you know that I really like one-liner or two-liner definitions because it is really important for us to understand what it is. You don't have to remember like passage of information because now we have AI tools for us to do that job. What we need to do is we need to just think analytically and apply them. So in this case, use the joint transformation to combine data from two sources or streams in a mapping data flow, right? In the previous video, we've seen what is mapping data flow. And here we use join transformation. And again, this is all part of ETL extract load and transformation. Uh, no, it was ELT what I mentioned, but extract transform and load. So ELT, ETL, <clears throat> get some confused there. But so the, the output stream will include all columns from both sources matched based on a join condition. So in joins, basically, we have five types within ADF data flow. The first one would be uh, full outer join, inner join, left outer join, right outer join, and cross join. Let's not get too deep into types of joins and how they you what what they are actually, because this video is not about understanding the types of joins. This video is mainly about understanding how to use a join in ADF data flow. So this is our ADF data flow instance, which is data bag hyphen data factory two. And this is the instance we've been using from past couple of videos to understand various components within ADF. So what you need to do is like I mentioned in the previous video, you have data flow option here. So let's try to create one data flow to use the join option. And like I mentioned, we are trying to fulfill my boss's requirement here. Trust me guys. He is funny, but if work is not done on time, he can get real serious. So the requirement is to join two different files. Let's say an employee file and an address file. And there is a common key, which is ID. And then we need to use a join option within ADF and it can be used easily, like I mentioned before. So the first thing is you create a data flow and then you use a add data source, right? Add source. And then you give a name to your data flow. Uh, this could be uh, join data flow right let's say uh, join data flow and then you can add your description here and then you can also click on this so that this window disappears so we have ample amount of space on the screen again and here on source one right so we need to inform or we need to tell our ADF flow from where it needs to bring the file as source one so in this case the source one would be employee okay And then you can add a description about that here and then here you need to select the data set so unfortunately we do not have any data sets created yet let's quickly create one so there are a couple of options where you can create or how you can create data sets but in this case we will use this plus option to create a data set so we have our employee file in azure blob storage right if you click on azure blob storage then click on continue and this is a csv file and then click on continue then you give a name for this uh, let's try to give employee and then you need to choose a linked service so I think we've already discussed what is a linked service in the previous videos please 
refer them if you don't understand or if it if link service is new for you and then you can directly browse these files so i already have created two different containers there one is source and the other one is sync so in this case it would be source because that is where we have our files click on the source and then you can click on input folder and then you can browse to your employee.txt so this this is be our source one right and you can also select first row as header because what this actually does is it will convert the first row as header of your csv file and it is very important okay yes that's easy peasy we have created our source one let's try to create our source two because we are trying to combine two files coming from same source in this case but it could also be different sources as well and then we will try to join them and then output it to a different file so here in this case you will create another one in the same azure blob storage and then csv file and then give a name to that so this would be a uh, address and then you select a linked service again the same linked service and then you can browse the file as we've done before and then you need to select this time the address.txt file and don't forget to check first row as header because we don't want our file to be shown messy right and that is it so now you have two sources which is now you have two different files one is employee and the other one is address right and now we wanted to see how this data looks like right that as a data engineer the first thing you need to do is analyze your data look at your data just have a peek at your data see what different columns and fields you have within your data so fortunately we have an option within data flow which is called data preview and to do that basically you need to enable this checkbox i've already done this because sometimes it takes some time because it needs to fire up a cluster in the back end but usually it is pretty quick right it also depends which location and what integration runtime you're using so in this case i've already enabled that so once you enable this data flow debug you will see a data preview option where you have to just click on refresh so it will fetch the data for you so sometimes it takes time when you're doing it for the first time okay in this case it is really quick you can see i have three columns one is id the other one is name and then the destination sorry designation ah it's designation okay so uh, we have three columns on this employee file and if you see the name so this is pretty much the team uh, within data bag uh, and then the other one you can also see the value or the contents of that file by clicking on the data preview and then click on a refresh button so here you can see id and then the country of each id so like my boss mentioned that the id is a common key or common column between these two files so now the next step for us would be to take a join right what you need to do is click on this plus option here and then click on this join that's it this is why i said piece of cake now what you need to do is you need to basically configure few options here first give a name okay let it let's keep it as join okay if you want you can give a description so it is asking us to add the left stream and the right stream right uh, so what is the left stream so the left stream is already added which is an employee you can see that and then it needs a right stream here the right stream is source one i think we forgot to give the name for this guy so let's give address as a source okay so now we have address as a source and now i think it should appear here on the right stream perfect so like i said before we have total five types of joins let's not get into detail of these things let's just use by default the inner join so basically what inner join does is it will try to compare each and every row from the left table or the left file in this case employee with the right file which is address right it will try to compare each row by row with the id column so then you select this inner join column and i think uh, you need to select that inner join that's a type of the join and then you need to select or choose on which column you want it to join them so which is a key element or which is a very important uh, element whenever you're doing a join you need to know what is a common key so that you can join on that column or on that key 
So in this case, it would be yes, ID. So you take ID from the employee column and then you take ID from the address column, right? So this is how you join them. So you also have like conditional operators here. So you can use uh, you know, various uh, other uh, conditions if you want, but let's try to just use uh, equal to. So where the employee ID equal to address ID. And then you can also uh, preview the data at this stage, right? So before uh, writing the outputs to a output file. Okay, perfect. So you can see here you have IDs coming from both the files and then you have name, designation and then country. So what we've already done is we have already joined, right? So you had three columns from file one and you had two columns from file two. So in total now you have five columns coming from both the files combined as one file, right? Now let's try to output this to a sync. So what we need to do is you need to select the sync basically and then let's try to uh, keep it as sync. Uh, now you need to use a data set, uh, which means here you are saying that the combined output needs to be sent to an output file as a resultant file. So you also need to say or you need to define where it needs to be stored. So let's try to select Azure Blob Storage as input files and then use delimited text as before and then give it as a name. Let's say uh, this is output, right? We're creating a data set here and then choose uh, a linked service and then browse the sync. So I already have a sync container and then choose this output folder and then uh, let this output.txt file. So if there is already an output.txt file, it will try to overwrite the contents with the new information. And don't forget to check the first row as header because or else you will have like, you know, uh, default column names coming there instead of the actual column names as headers. So that is it. I think you just click OK and then uh, we are good to go. So if you there are four columns coming uh, after the join activity. So if you want to, you know, um, run this pipeline, basically you need to publish all these changes, right? Uh, so once you publish them, then you need to create a pipeline. Let's try to do that real quick. Uh, use uh, data flow activity. So this is how you basically use the data flow activity. Uh, and then you say that uh, which data flow because join underscore data flow is the data flow which we've created, right? So use this data flow activity uh, and uh, create a pipeline. And it says that if there are any parameters, you need to use them, but we don't really have any parameters. So you can use uh, debug or you can also say that trigger it now. The pipeline is not for, please uh, publish it first. Okay. So you need to, it's, it's kind of like, you know, saving your changes to the live instance of uh, data factory, but we will discuss about setting up a repository and uh, how you can set up your Azure DevOps so that you also have a save option there. But currently we do not have any Azure DevOps or any Git set up there. That's the reason we are directly publishing it to the live instance. So now we have published it. Now click on add trigger. So basically I'm saying that asking it to run the pipeline now, which is triggering the pipeline now. So it is running. Uh, it might take some time uh, because um, uh, let's see how long does it take. Uh, okay. So um, we can also check it under the monitoring part, right? So if you click on this monitor section, you should be able to see the status of the pipeline. So currently it is still in progress. So let's wait for some time and then uh, come back and see uh, once the status is complete. You can see uh, the destination, uh, the sync is succeeded and uh, it kind of took these many milliseconds and you can also see the succeeded uh, message uh, we received on the pipeline level as well okay so if i go back here you can see the status and then uh, under the monitor section i think it is still not there yet yeah now you can see the status is succeeded so now if i go to my sync right um, uh, so this is my uh, storage account and under that if i look into my sync 
and then uh, if I uh, go to my output.txt for instance uh, this guy right so you can already see uh, the combined data coming here right so you have total four columns okay uh, yeah I think uh, that is it about this video so don't worry about uh, the file name why is it this way and uh, you know uh, those kind of things uh, we will discuss them uh, in detail but for this video I think that is it uh, with this work I hope my boss should be happy because I was able to do this uh, just by using out of box solution of uh, Azure data factory we hope uh, you liked uh, this video and uh, please subscribe to our channel and also follow us on LinkedIn. See you in the next video. Have a good day.